Hey Floss Tube, it is Michelle from Made by Michelle McGraw, and this is Floss Tube number 48. I'm filming this on March 23rd, 2021, and I will upload it actually tomorrow. Um, I have, I want to add some links in for something that I'm going to show you guys in a little bit. Um, sneak peek, it's right here. Um, I'll move that out of the frame in just a minute. I'll get to that and move it so it's not in the way, the whole video. Um, but I want to add the links in my video description box for anybody who would be interested. Um, I am um, thankful everybody is here. Um, so thank you for joining me and spending time with me. If you don't already subscribe, hit the subscribe button and welcome and comment and be part of the community because that's why I do this. Um, hopefully that's why everybody joins is to be just part of it and chit chat cross stitching because I know that my girlfriends in that I hang out with in real life, they kind of are zoning out on my cross stitch talk. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, I'm battling some sun. When I set this up, it was nice and cloudy and which actually I have a lot of light. I don't need direct sunlight. Now the direct sunlight is coming in this room. Um, I thought it was supposed to be rainy today. I don't know. It's North Carolina. Who knows? Um, so I put a towel up so that hopefully it doesn't direct on me or on the stitching, more importantly. Um, let's face it. That's what we're here for, right? So um, we'll hopefully, once the trees come out, once summer comes out, it's not an issue. But for right now, there are bare trees in my backyard. And then I get that direct morning sun and it's not the greatest for filming. So anyhow, um, I just want to thank everybody for joining me. I've had a lot of subscriber, new subscribers, and thank you. Um, I had a list of some floss tubers I wanted to shout out, and I forgot to bring it in here with me. So I will be shouting out some floss tubers as I go through some projects, um, because that's what it's all about is like making connections and making friends, and it's such a great thing. So I love interacting with you guys on the comments, on my Instagram. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, it is made by Michelle McGraw. Um, and I always, I'm on Instagram a lot more than I am on Facebook. So I do Instagram more than Facebook. Um, but, but yeah, so give me a follow and, um, I love seeing everybody's projects and, you know, it always inspires me. All right. We're going to move on because I have tons to show. Um, I'm going to do fully finished first and then I will do this oblong thing. Well, let me just do this first. All right. So, full disclosure, I was gifted a light. A company reached out to me and asked me if I would be interested in talking about their, trying out their light and then talking about it on my YouTube channel. I said, yes, but I'm going to give an honest review um, if I like it. I said, I use Stitch with an Ot light. So, you know, I'm going to give an honest review. I will say, um, I'm impressed. I love my out light. Um, when I stitch, I generally use um, reading glasses. I don't need reading glasses for 14 count Ada, but I need reading glasses for 20, uh, 28 count even weaver linen. I, I know, bizarre. So I normally have reading glasses on, which I'm resisting getting the transition ones because now I'm at the point where these are for distance. I take these off um, to read up close. <laughs> And the doctor's like, well, you can do transition. And I'm like, I am 46 years old. I am not ready <laughs> for that. I'm, I'm resisting. And they're like, it's okay. I understand. I'm like, I know I'm being a big baby about it, but it's what works right now. So anyhow, um, I need a good light. I use an Ot light. I've used an Ot light for, oh my gosh, probably 10 years, maybe less, no, less than that, maybe seven years. Um, love my out light. I, I could not stitch without a good light. So it had to live up to what my out light does. I'm not going to say whether this is better or worse um, because I love both of them, but this is pretty good and I'm blown away. So I'm going to show you the light. I'm going to bring it down so you can see. This is a BenQ. Now this is a tabletop lamp, okay? This base is weighted, which I really, really like. 
Now, it's hard to show it in the whole view here because it's so big. So as you can see, it's fully adjustable. So it has a long span. Now, that was one of the things that I worried about when I got this, when, when they asked me, did I want the light? Because I use a floor lamp. And I do have a table beside me. So if I move this, this is the table that sits beside me. And then my chair is over here. You can't really see it. It's out of the frame. Oh, there's a cat. Uh, but this is the table that sits beside me. You can't see my ot light right there, but my ot light is over that area. But I do have a tabletop to put this on. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try it. I love the fact that the base is weighted because I can put this way over and still have light. Like I can spread this out. My, my full arm is out and away from my body. And this is where the light is. So that's amazing. So it has a long reach and being able to be able to reach it out, it needs to be weighted so that it won't tip over. This does not tip over. So the light itself, let me show you the lens and I'm sorry for banging on the table. This is the light itself. This is how you um, brighten it or change the tone of the light. So it does have like what I call a daylight tone and then it has like a pure white or blue light, I guess you could say that. That's the way I'm describing it. That's not the way they describe it. That's the way I'm describing it. I actually like to stitch which, which is closest to an alt light, which is like the blue white light. I, the daytime light is more of a yellowy light. I like the more blue light. This is the whole light. This is all light, which actually means it lights up a bigger area that I'm working. So like I stitch with a foldable table up to my recliner, which has my pattern, sometimes my iPad on it, um, my pattern in a pattern holder, so I'm, I'm following along. Um, I put my scissors up there, my floss up there. Um, so I need a light not only to illuminate what I'm stitching, but to illuminate that pattern area. And this does a really nice job. It is super, super bright. I, on the highest setting, it's brighter than my hot light. I was very pleased with that. Um, you turn it on and off just by touching up here, which I like. Um, let me see, I can plug this in. I don't think you're gonna get a great view because it's daytime. I will put some pictures up on my Instagram um, with nighttime light. So I need to unplug that for a minute. Okay. All right, sorry, rest swirling around. Um, okay, so the light came on and let me see. I don't think, like, here's how you turn it on and off. And then you can adjust, I'm trying to see if I can do it. I'm balancing it on my lap. You're not gonna be able to see the differences of the light in this video because it's not coming through. Oh, there we go. There's the bluer. I turned it off now. So I don't know if you can tell that. You can see that it's changing on my arm, but I don't know if you can tell exactly. Anyhow, it is fantastic. There is, they sell them on Amazon. You, I think you can order directly from the website, but I would assume Amazon is easiest for most people. I'm gonna put both links in the description box. And it is BenQ. So you can see the little right there, just Ben, B-E-N-Q. All right, fantastic. Um, I'm actually going to move my alt light and use this for a while just by itself. Um, I stitched with it last night by itself. I wanted to see if the setup worked, especially because my alt light is a floor lamp. So I wanted to see if this table lamp would work and it did. I was so surprised and loved it. So BenQ, if you are looking for a good light, I, call me impressed. I'm very, very impressed with it. Very impressed with the lighting and the, and, and the options. So I would highly recommend it. Um, I haven't been using it that long, but 
I think most of us can stitch a couple stitches if we have good light or not and know pretty sure whether that's going to work. And there's different settings. So like you, if you like a daylight light, you could change it to daylight. I like a more bright white light um, to stitch by. So it has options for everybody. Um, so yeah, I'll put those links down there if you're interested. I am not making any money off that. They, ju they did gift the light to me for free. Um, but like I said, I was going to give the review based on my experience. Um, and my experience is a big thumbs up with it. So I'm very impressed. All right, we're here for the stitching. Let me get to the stitching. Okay. I have five fully finishes this week. And I will show the first one. Okay, just for statistics purpose, because I'm tracking it this year, I don't always. I have 5, 10, 20, 25, 28 finishes so far this year. 28 finishes. I'm, I'm, but now my finishes are small, so keep that in mind. So don't, don't feel bad. I'm doing a lot of pillows for my doble. Okay, so my first one is actually something that I started during Stitch Mania last year, which is Early Americans from Little House um, Little House Needleworks. I don't know why, <laughs> just blanked on that. Um, and this is John Hancock. So this is a set of nine, yeah, nine that you can do, all different Early Americans, and you can do it as one big unit or you can do like they show as a small pillow. Now, of course, you know, I'm stitching for my dough bowl, but I always intended to do them as smalls. I wasn't gonna do these as big. So I am. I started this last year. I did do some color um, substitutions just because I did not have the called for at the time, but I kept the same color palette. I just used what I had. Um, trying to think if there's anything. Oh. I, this is stitched on 28 count stand, Sandstorm from Cross Wing Collection. And here's my finish. This is lovely linen to stitch on. It's very, very, it's like a very even linen. I really, really like it. Um, I did brighten up this is supposed to be eggshell, the white. I went with just white because my linen, um, the eggshell didn't show up well on it. So I just changed it to white, worked just fine. Um, I love the fact that it has a piece of paper here and then the inkwell for John Hancock. So I love that. Um, yeah, I finished it off as a pillow. I finished it with, I think it's called Liberty it's a fabric, um, like a quilting pack that I just got in on Friday. And I was waiting for it. Um, and you'll see this fabric on several of my patriotic finishes. Um, it's patriotic, but without like screaming 4th of July, if that makes sense. I love it. It's a whole quilt line. I will show you that in stash. Um, those are my favorite to buy pieces of fabric. So to get the whole quilt line. And then I just finished it off. This is actually yarn from Chenille Yarn from Michaels. Um, it is variegated slightly, so I don't know if it's going to show up camera. You can see it variegates slightly. So that's my first finish, um, John Hancock. Um, I am going to do some of the other ones. Um, I'm trying to see where I can put this. I'll just put it over here. Um, in that series, I don't know if I'll start it this year or it'll be another time, but I do want to do all of them. All right, the next one, I do not have these in order, which would be helpful. Okay, this is American Primitive from the Prairie Schooler. And it's from the American Primitive Primitives book. And I got this book used, although it's pretty good condition. Um, and I have stitched Uncle Sam and Lady Liberty. So let me show you those two. All right, Uncle Sam is stitched on 14 count ancient by Picture This Plus. Um, I use the called for except for the red and the blue. For the red, I use 321. And for the blue, I use 336, all DMC. Um, 
And I just changed the blue mainly because I liked it with the red, just a smidge better than the called for. Um, just to update the colors just a little bit, it the red called for was 355 and I wanted like a really, really red to match my other 4th of July finishes. So I finished this off into a little pillow because you know, dough bowls. And this is my backing fabric. Is that not beautiful? Same from that Liberty um, quilt pack. And I finished it with a really fluffy trim. So this is actually from Michael's as, yes, Michael's as well. It is, I'm gonna say it wrong, velvet yarn, I think is what they what it called. And it's just a little bit bigger than like the typical, but I really loved these pieces and I wanted them to stand out. So I put on the bigger one, trim on this one. So like you can see the difference in the trims. This is chenille yarn. This is the velvet yarn. So it's a little bit fluffier, but I really liked how it turned out with it. Really like that. Okay, I also stitched Lady Liberty out of that same pattern. And here's Lady Liberty. Now I used the same red and blue colors, but I changed her wings. Her wings are originally supposed to be tan. I changed her wings to white. So she still has them, but they're white. And I liked that a little bit better, just making it a little bit more modern. I finished it with the same trim that I used, the velvet trim and the same backing fabric. So when I ordered the quilt pack, I ordered a fat quarter bundle. Um, and I had enough to do both of these in the same fabric. My sister actually wants to stitch these and I have enough for her to do her two. And then I would have, I would have enough to do probably two more out of a fat bundle. And that's not even being conservative with the fabric. That's just cutting it. So um, I could probably even get one more out of that if I was conservative when I cut my fabric. So that's my third finish. Okay, my next finish, let me get, is Bee Quaker from Frog Cottage Designs. Now, this pattern was gifted to me by Deb at Frog, Frog Cottage Designs, and she gifted me this as a PDF a, a ways ago. And I knew, that I would be stitching it up when I stitched my bees and I stitched it and I love it. Um, if you haven't checked out, Deb is on YouTube as, I think it comes up as Deb from Frog Cottage or Deb Frog Cottage Designs. Um, she's also on Instagram, Instagram Frog Cottage Designs Deb. Um, I, I loved this, it's so cute, so cute. I mean, who doesn't like a Quaker, right? Okay, so I stitched this one up with some more of that ancient from Picture This Plus. Um, I had a piece of it and I cut it down and actually I think four of the five are stitched on it. So I did just pull colors for the bees. I just pulled a yellow that I had in my bag, the black, and then the called for white. I think, I think it was called for white. Um, I don't know. I just picked colors. It was fine. You could do this in any color. I did change the date to 2001 and I put my initials down here. I just, I adore this. This is so cute. Um, as you guys know, I'm stitching patriotic and bees and I love finding different things because I don't want five bee skips. I want different bee things. So this is perfect. It's adorable. It stitched up very quickly. Um, I have fuzz on the back. Um, and then I just used a little bit of backing fabric that I had, which was some flowers, some muted flowers. And this is chenille yarn, once again, from Michaels. So I just liked how that um, made it pop, brought out the bees. This is adorable. Um, Frog Cottage Designs has some really cute patterns. So go check her out. I know that they are available through 123 Stitch as well. I've seen a couple of her patterns pop up. Um, so go check her out. They are fantastic. 
and check out her YouTube um, because her floss tube is fantastic too. She's delightful. She's from Australia. She has a beautiful accent and, and it's just such a delight. She's very um, relaxing to listen to on, on floss tube. So go check out Deb. Um, okay, the last fully finished that I have is from Land That I Love, Birds of a Feather. So as you know, Birds of a Feather is are all discontinued now. So this is an older chart that I had. I'm not sure when I got this or where I got this. I've had it for a little bit, so I'm not sure. I definitely wanted to stitch it. I did make some color changes. So I just basically, um, I picked what I liked. I kept the same color palette except for the birds up here and the water are kind of grayish and I changed it to be more of a bluey green. So here's my finish and then I'll go over my changes. And it's a nice size pillow. Um, I did add some fabric to the bottom and I added some ribbon that I had and I, I just, on my ribbon, I just sew it across. I just do one line and stitch it to it. I have had people ask me if I glue my trims onto my pillows. I do not, I hand sew them on. Not because I think that that looks better or anything like that. It's because I am super messy with wet glue. No one should ever give Michelle wet glue. I'm just gonna say that. Don't give me wet glue. I'm going to make a mess. I'm gonna use too much. It's gonna squirt everywhere. God forbid don't give me a hot glue gun because I literally am so concerned that I will get hot glue in my hair. I'm not gonna say that that hasn't happened before. Don't give me a hot glue gun. <laughs> so I hand stitch it on. I don't know whether that's right or wrong. It's just what I do because, um, it, like I said, I'm messy. So I literally just stitched right across the center of these flowers and stitched it on there. Um, like I said, I changed the birds to this bluey green color. And what did I change it to? Um, I think it was supposed to be, hmm, dark. I think it was supposed to be Father's Day and I did dark indigo, I think. I think that was my change. Here's my color changes. So, I love this. Once again, um, I changed my initials for Michelle McGraw and then the date, which I love, that's part of the sampler. Love it, this is one of my favorites. Um, I do use lizard litter and I meant to bring the bag over here. If you will hold on, I will go get the bag. Hold on. Okay, sorry, poor planning on my part. I got a couple of questions, what do I use? And I have this closed so that it doesn't spill everywhere because oh my gosh, that would be awful. But this is the brand that I use, Zilla. Desert Blend. Now, it is not a blend. I looked at it. It is crushed walnut shells. Um, and as you can see, that's what it looks like. I get mine on Amazon. This is a five-quart bag. I generally order two five-quart bags when I order. Um, when I get down to a half a bag of my second bag, I order two more. It's very inexpensive. I think you could probably get this cheaper. Um, somebody told me you could get it cheaper if you went into Walmart or went into a pet store. I personally have not priced it, but it's like $6 and maybe 50 cents or six something on Amazon. And I think free shipping, that's not a bad deal to me. So I order it on Amazon. Um, so that's the lizard litter that I use. Um, so, if you're looking on that, there you go. Um, I also had a question on my seed pack finish. So somebody asked, did I put the seed pack between the cardstock? I did not. I layered pieces of cardstock so that it would be 
rigid and firm. And then I just scooped um, probably about two tablespoons. Like if I can show you a profile, let me try to get it all down there. Maybe a big heaping, there's some dog hair on there, sorry. <laughs> Maybe a big heaping tablespoon in there. Um, and that's all I put in there. And then it rattles against it. I did not put the, be the beads between the cardstock pieces. So I hope that answers the question. Let's see. All right, those were all the things that I had that were kind of oddball that I want to show you. I will show you some other ones that are on my, this is one of my cross stitch boards right now. And these are seed packs. These came out of a, of a book that had multiple things in it. And that's turnips, carrots, broccoli, and tomatoes. So I've loved seed packs for a long time. So this is on one of my boards um, that I had for spring. I just pulled them off to show you. All right, let me show you some more finishes. Yep. All right, so I have two more finishes. Let me see if I have the card out here. All right, so I have two more finishes and they both come from Queen Bee Flower Farm from Hands On Design. So this has a smaller pattern and then it has the bigger pattern. I like both, but this was going to be too big to put in a tiered tray or my dough bowl or my stand. I call my tiered stand, um, I should say that. Um, it was gonna be too big. So I really liked some of it for bees. I really liked the truck with the beehives and I really liked the beehives up here with the flowers and the chickens. So I pulled those elements out of the chart and I stitched them up. These are both stitched on fiber on the whim and it's 14 count night sky. Um, I love this for a chalkboard design. As you can see, I haven't ironed it. <laughs> but there is the truck with the bee skip and bee skips and that cute little doggy and the chickens. So I love that. I will finish that into a mini pillow as well. And once again, I'm always looking for different stuff. I don't want 25 of the same thing in my dough bowl. 25 would be awesome, wouldn't it? And then here is the bee skips and the flowers and the chickens, which is super cute too. And they'll be made into pillows as well. I would like to do the queen bee flower farm sign up here. I don't know if I'll get to it this year or not. So I have it. It's not going anywhere. Okay, I also um, finished Country Rustic Primitives Bee Garden Pin Top. Not a great photo, it's teeny tiny, but here's my finish that you can see. Now I just pulled threads from my stash that I had. I have a bag of primitive stitching that I do, and I just have some primitive colors in there that they called for. Um, I changed, I think the green, I think I used the call for yellows, but the flower centers, I changed them to like a red. So you can kind of see they're a little different. I actually think they call for a tan, but I liked kind of the blending look. I changed the date to 2021 and it is on 14 count murky fabric. Um, I have a backing fabric picked out, picked out. I don't know if I'll use it or not, but here's some stripes. I don't know. We'll see once I actually go to finish it, whether I use it. Hard to say sometimes. I changed my mind at the last minute. Okay. All right. Um, two more. Well, these are whips now. And one, I did not bring the card over here. So this is... Um, I did bring the pattern, I thought. Yes, I did. Okay, Firework Lane from Little Stitch Girl. And this was a start from last year and I am changing it from my original start. I was gonna do the whole strip of um, houses. 
I am going to do one house and finish it for my dough bowl mainly because I've changed my mind about where I want to put these and I think I will use it more as a dough bowl versus framing a seasonal piece. So I'm going to do the house. I am going to save my pattern and in hopes of coming back and doing the other two houses at some other time. I probably won't do them this year but who knows. And here is my progress. This is on um oh what fabric um it's printed fabric flare there we go it's printed so on one side is the color the other side is white and it's night sky so it kind of goes all right yeah i think it's night sky or moon no moonless sky and it goes from dark to light which i liked for fourth of july and watching fireworks it looked dark to me i have just picked colors like this blue i just picked out of my stash um I changed the green down here. It called for a little bit lighter. I liked darker, so I changed it. Um, I have the fence to put in, the eagle to put in, and the tree to put in yet, and then finish the white outlining on the house. So hopefully I'll get done with that soon. And then my next whip is in my to-go bag which I showed you guys this before. This is all my prim stuff. And I started a new pattern from the Humble Stitcher on Etsy, and it's Happy Birthday USA. And I think she's adorable little girl pulling her cats in the wagon. She's just cute. So here is my progress that I started last week at work. Not a big progress, but there you go. Once again, it's 14 count murky. All of my prim stitching is normally on murky, unless I change it for some reason, I don't know. But um, that will go to work with me again. It probably won't be finished on this Friday because it takes, I, I work in between trucks that come across the scales. So if you're new here, we own a concrete recycling yard and I run the scales and on Fridays all day, and I do billing. So um, in between, when I get that done, then I'm just waiting on trucks and I can stitch as I wait. Okay, I wanna go over my winners of the patterns last week. So last week I did the summer um, beaming forth and I had 220 entries for this Blackbird design and the keyword was summer and Rachel Lasky, L-A-S-K-E-Y, has won. I probably killed your last name. I'm so sorry. Rachel, get a hold of me. You can instant message me through Instagram, which is made by Michelle McGraw, or you can send me an email, which is made by Michelle McGraw at gmail.com. Either way, uh, make sure you give me your first and last name and then put that you won the Blackbird chart on there so that I make sure I always want to double check that the chart I'm sending to the person is the correct chart. And so that just gives me another line of, I can match it to the address. Okay. The next one was Heartstring Samplers, Festive Little Fobs from Barnyard Edition. I stitched these up. I think I've showed them before. I will be putting them out this summer. And this one is, I had 99 comments and it was a new subscriber that won, H Beak. So H Beak, H B E A K. Uh, get a hold of me, Instagram message, email. Let me know your full name and your Insta in, and your YouTube name, so that I can pair them up and put Barnyard in your in your um, message, so that I know it goes to you. All right, the last one was from Liz Matthews, and you had to say bees, and I had eighty three people. And uh, Janine Draper has won. So Janine, get a hold of me through those other methods and I will send these charts out to you. I itch, sorry. It is springtime, eyes, nose, everything itches in the springtime in the South. Okay, I wanna go ahead and go through this week's giveaways. So it's gonna be a little bit different. I am gonna give away, two of them are sets of charts and one of them is just a, a normal chart. 
Okay, so the first one is from Sugar Stitches and it is a set of three charts. So you have Cottontail Cupcakes, um, Cottontail Carrot Patch, and Cottontail Delivery, all from Sugar Stitches. You would win all three of these. So you are gonna say the word bunny in your comment, okay? Bunny. All right, for the next giveaway, this is from my stash and it's an older chart. I would have thought that it had a plastic bag, but I don't have one for it, but it is a, I, maybe I should look and make sure the chart's in here. It is, yeah, it is. Um, I've never stitched it, so I'd like to pass it on to somebody that will. It's really cute. Look at that bunny and the basket and the egg and the flowers. It's so cute. For this one, you're gonna say egg in your comment. Somewhere in your comment, you can, you can enter for all of them. You can put all three words in there. What I do is I use random common generator and what it does is I plug in each word separately. So you go back in the drawing for each word. So it's not that you won and then you're done or you can only do one. You go back in each drawing because it just generates the comments again. All right, and the last one is a series of two from Shannon Christine, and this is Stars and Stripes, and this one is called July 4th. And for these two charts, you're going to say the word July in your comment, okay? So July, egg, or bunny, or but all of them. So there you go. All right. The next thing I wanted to talk about is, if you don't already watch Mama Loves You GB on FlossTube, go check her out, because she's fantastic, um, and I enjoy her so much. Her, um, her jokes often make me snicker. Um, but she has a giveaway, and I am going to direct you to her FlossTube to get the, the giveaway, but it's brilliant. I'm gonna show this way back because it is a freebie, but it is all of the letters of the alphabet, and it is a chart with one specialty stitch per chart, and it shows you how to do them. A is for acorn or Algerian islet, and so in the chart, there's some Ar Argerian, I'm not going to say that word again, islets in there, okay, and then they show you how to do them, and that's the way it is on every single letter. There are 24 free charts. Mama Loves You GB links them in her floss tube. If you click the description box and go down to freebies, she links them. Go check out her floss tube. Go check out her link because it came from her. Um, I was looking at it and I was like, oh my God, that would be fantastic for the dough bowl, right? Like um, do them on just really kind of vintagey looking. Be fantastic. And then she's like, uh, made by Michelle McGraw, dough ball. And I was like, girl, I've already paused you and I'm back because I went to go, went to go <laughs> print the pattern. True story. All right, I'm trying to find my top page to this next pattern that I got. Here it is. Okay, so this is from um, Twin Peaks Primitives. And I saw this pattern on Finally a Farm Girl. She's delightful. She does a lot of... Um, stitching for Twin Peak Primitives, but she does a lot of stitching in general. And she just recently started a floss tube, but is not new to stitching at all. Um, she showed this chart and it is Springfield 1817 Sampler. I, when I saw this on Twin Peaks Primitives, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I was like, oh, okay. I saw finally a farm girl stitch it. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful beautiful. Now it is a big pattern. And I think when I printed the pattern, I think they said it was 27 pages. Now their patterns are nice and big. So like you're not getting a tiny chart, but this is a big chart. So keep that in mind, but it is beautiful. And I think this was like the Dutch mania for this year's chart that I'm not sure, but it's beautiful. So I got mine off of Twin Peaks Primitives on Etsy. Um, but I saw, um, finally a farm girl was stitching it and 
I think there's many charts that when you see the front cover, it's pretty, but it doesn't show you how pretty it is. And when I saw her stitch, I was like, oh, I gotta go get that. So I did. Um, and check out Finally a, Finally a Farm Girl on Instagram. She's fantastic. All right, so now I'm gonna go into some haul that I got, and then I wanted to show you my basket of 4th of July and B stitching. And so just to kind of show you what I'm pulling from, something fun. All right, I got more of the Fiber on a Whim 14 count um, night sky. I got mine off of Fat Quarter Shop and it is what I did, the hands-on design. So when it calls for a chalkboard piece, this is my favorite chalkboard that I found so far. I really, really like this. Matter of fact, someone might have ordered four more pieces. I'm just saying someone did. Okay. The next pattern that I did is Rocking Horse Cross Stitch on Etsy, and it was, I think it's Etsy. Let me make sure. I think I got it on Etsy. It is Colorful Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. And I love that. As you know, we have three cavies, and I just think that's adorable. And it's not that big. It is 101 by 121, so it's not huge. I will be starting that sometime soon and put it in the rotation. It will not be probably finished this year because I'm doing smalls. I love my big pat patterns that I have starts, but I am really enjoying filling my dough bowl. Like I love stitching these smalls. So I've had a good time with this this year. Um, you know, moving to do the smalls, I've, I've enjoyed it. So, all right, this is not a new one, but I definitely got it. <sighs> A ways back and I saw something on Brenda and the cereal starter she had these little pillows that were from Etsy um, that were adorable and I've checked it out and if you haven't seen their floss tube go check out their floss tube because she shows it and then she tells the Etsy store that you can order it from so as soon as I saw that I thought oh my gosh I have fabric that I bought just to have because it had a cavalier on it but I thought, how cute would that be to do a pillow like that? And so this is the fabric. Let me hold it up. Are they not adorable? Are they not adorable? So what I want to do is I want to make a pillow and I'm going to cut it out to feature the little cavaliers. And then I will make a trim and everything. I'll make it just like, you know, a pillow that has stitching on it but it's just gonna be this motif and then I'll add something to it, you know, maybe a button or something to bling it up, but just to really kind of shine this fabric. I have, I don't know if this is a yard of it, but I have a lot of it. I think I bought it to make a bag um, and I, I still will have plenty left because like I can just cut this out to do these. I will have plenty left, but I thought that would be a cute, decoration for my dough bowl. It's not technically stitching, but it would be really cute. And I was trying to think what other fabric do I have that I could do that with? So go watch Brenda and the Cereal Starter and you'll see her pillows that she bought. And that kind of inspired me to look through my fabric. And this was the first one that popped in my mind. All right, more haul. This is the fabric bundle minus one piece because I have set it aside for my sister to use of Liberty. So there's some words, there's some 4th of July, here's some gingham. It's a, uh, I think, it's not a typical gingham. I don't know what you would call that. Maybe it's just a plaid or a checkerboard, I don't know. No, it's not checkerboard even. I don't know what this is. If anybody knows what this is called, let me know. I don't know what that, picnic? Picnic? I don't know. So here it is in white, some stars, some of the red flowers, which is similar to that blue that I used. It in red, there's pinwheels in red, words in red. So we go through the reds, there you go. Here it is in white. So kind of the same, similar, here's in blue. And then I have used some of this piece, which I guys, I already showed you the finishing fabric and then some stars and some more flowers. So that's the quilt pack that I bought for 4th of July finishing this year. 
Uh oh, I think one of my, all right, I'm gonna have to adjust the whole camera. Hold on just a minute. Ugh, sorry, I set the camera on my patterns. Like that was like a really up close picture. Sorry. Now that I've horrified all the children in the room. Okay, so these were some more patterns that I bought. Summer Alphabet from Lizzie Kate. This one is actually going in my basket. It is Busy Bee from Lizzie Kate, which I did not have before. So that one's going in the basket. This one's going in the basket, Where Liberty Dwells by Brenda Gervais. Really cute. This was a new one, um, For Freedom by The Moo The Merrier, which I think is so cute for 4th of July, something different. I think I'm gonna change the colors a little bit. I want a little bit deeper red and a deeper blue. But we'll see if I get to them this year. Some of those are going in my basket. Um, let me show you my last stash, which is my All Hallows Eve bundle. I'm not gonna open it because I'm not ready to use it yet and I don't wanna have to like catch it all over my room. But I wanted this fabric bundle. This is from, is it Moda? Yeah. I wanted this fabric bundle last year and it was always sold out every time I went to go find it or I just could never get it. And so I love the Halloween fall feel without being screaming my face Halloween, if that makes sense. So I bought those two bundles with my fat quarter shop order. All right. The last and final thing is my basket that I'm going to share with you. Okay. See my basket of goodies. So let me go ahead and share. I have thrown my patterns in here and this is what I'm pulling out right now to stitch for 4th of July or bees. I will not stitch all this. These are my choices. So this is where I'm going to get my stuff. I will not stitch it all, just so you know. Okay, so these got stuck in there kind of last minute because I've had these for years. I ordered them as kits. And I have two charts per, and then the floss is in there. But they are the hands-on chalk designs. So like there's a barbecue, there's a summer bees one, but it's all the seasons in here. Like I have all of them that came in the set. Um, they're in my bag. I don't know if I'll do them this year, but I thought, well, maybe I should stick them in there because they're not that, they're not that big and they'll be quick. I should stick them in there and see if I do one or two of them. Uh, this is Bee Queen of the Needles. And this is actually a needle book. Um, let me see if she has another picture. Yes. This is the needle book the way it looks. Now, I would not be stitching it as a needle book. I'm going to stitch it for my dough bowl as bees. I don't know how many of those I'm going to stitch, but I want to stitch that queen. She's fantastic. And I love, once again, that it's something different for bees. It's not just a bee. It's different. All right. This is Samplings of Spring from... Punch Needle, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. It's the new one out this quarter. And this is Sampling of Spring from Leela May Designs. And it is a cute little sampler with some bees. So it says spring, but I actually think that that could be summer as well. So I stuck it in the basket as I was sorting those patterns. I have a digital copy, so I print mine out. All right, this is Bent Creek Flag of Stars. And this is a kit that I got, I don't know how long ago. It has the floss in there and the linen. The floss is pearl cotton, which I've actually not stitched cross stitch with it ever before. I have used pearl cotton in um, felt work, but not in cross stitch. So I actually really want to stitch this up. And I have the kit, so that's in the bag. Once again, I don't know. Oh, this is not supposed to be in there. That's Christmas. And yes, this one's supposed to be in there. I had a couple that were sitting on my floor and um, I, I was picking up yesterday and I just threw them in baskets. 
clearly not the right way to go. All right, this is Frosty, no, this is not the right bag for this. This is Welcome to the Forest from Country Needleworks, Country Cottage Needleworks. And these are cute little summer patterns and I have the whole set. Now, I don't know that I'm gonna get to these this year because these don't fit in my patriotic or bees, but I do have it kitted up and I even picked out fabric. So I have them, all my patterns are in a plastic baggie that I reused apparently because it's not the right name. And I do have a fabric picked out of 16 count Bo Peep. It's just a light pink, but I think they would look really pretty on a light pink fabric and I could use it. So I don't know. I haven't started that yet. I don't know that it's going to be this year, but we'll see. This is From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy and it's Freedom Quaker. I really like that. So this is on my short list to do. Once again, I don't know if I'll get to it. This is new spring and summer from Annie B's Folk Art, and it is Biddy Barnes. And I would do the summer one. Um, this is in here. I am not ready to start this one, but it's in here. I will cling to the old rugged cross, Sunday stitches, old rugged cross, heartstring samplery. That is the new, um, newer one that she's released. And I stuck it in there just so I didn't misplace it somewhere. <laughs> that happens. Okay, this one is one I've had kitted forever. And it is Sweet Land of Liberty by JBW Designs. Just a sweet little, little one. And this is small. This is 105 by 35. It would take no time at all. I have threads kitted up. I have some fabric in here, a 32 count. Um, picture this plus linen, ancient. I don't know if I'd use that. I might. Um, so I had that. I just stuck it in there because it is 4th of July. And I have frilly cabbage seeds, which I need to do some more of the seed packs. The spicy radish. Whoops. I have the other flower ones in my bag that has my chalkboard stuff. So these were just the ones... Um, I have them stuck in there. I have my Sally Spencer in here, but you know, I'm not, I'm still trying to kit this up. I haven't been able to find any of the floss. We'll see. Um, that's not supposed to be here. Apparently when you clean for the cleaning lady, you throw everything in your basket. Okay, this is another one. Now this is not gonna start right away, but I have wanted this to do this forever. And it is the shine on cross stitch piece. And I think Fat Quarter Shop is doing a stitch along with it right now. I did not realize I looked everywhere for this chart. I did not realize I had the chart because I already bought the Bonnie and Camille uh, quilt bead book. And it's in the back of the book. Um, I bought this floss to go to possibly do it but it's for it's supposed to be for Stitchville which is a different pattern but I actually kind of like the colors and they're very similar so I might just use that for that and that's Cosmo floss and I've never used Cosmo before okay here is a Brooks Brothers publishing this is a free chart land that I love so go check out Brooks Brothers um, this is a chart that just came in and I just stuck it in there. I'm, I'm not going to start it anytime soon, but I do want to start it. It is the 1896 Alpha Block Sampler. And I ordered mine from Country Stitcher, I think, Stitching. And I got it as a kit with all the floss. I love that. So I want to do that. And I there is a note in here. Oh my gosh, there's the, the pictures on the back of here are so pretty. Yeah, they're so pretty. Can you see the other ones in there? Like the other, the versions of 
it's an adapted, the antique one, and then um, the antique, the back of it. And they're just so pretty. Is that not so pretty? There's a group on, not a group, it's, I think it's three ladies on Instagram that stitched this and they inspired me to get this chart because it's fantastic. All right, now we should be into more of my bees and patriotic. B is for beekeeper from Heartstring Samplery. And that one's 80 by 80, so not, not big. Um, this is Quaker Pig and Rooster from the Work Basket. And I just liked the rooster. I think that's so different. Not really patriotic, but it's red. Okay, so these are um, Little House Needleworks, Louis, Louis and Henry, and then Bessie. And they're just kind of farm ones that I like. Once again, I don't know that I'll do them this year because it doesn't really fit into my theme. There's a couple patterns that don't fit into my theme, but fit into summer in case I get to them or I just get bored with, I don't want to stitch any more yellow right now. Or I don't want to stitch any more red, white, and blue right now. This is Hello Summer from the Frosted Pumpkin. I just, I love that one. I think that's so cute. The colors are fantastic. This one is, um, it's Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnet, the Stitching Prim Stitch Series, Faith and Endurance, number seven. And I just really like this one. So I think that would be cute for a dough bowl. I like a lot of them. All right, this is Summer uh, Sunflowers and Bees from Pantini Pantini. Pantini. Um, and they have little bee buttons. Is that not adorable? And this isn't that big either. It's 65 by 68. That's not that big. Fabulous. This is the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Summer Nights. And it says Summer Nights and Bonfire Lights. I love their little sayings like this. So I really like that one. All right, this is the Prairie Schooler and this is the July, which is definitely patriotic, but what I like about it is this sampler up here and I like the top portion. So I would do it, it says, July brings the greatest heat, strawberries and melon make cool treats. And I think that would be cute as a saying, just that section up top. A lot of things that I've been looking at, I go through my patterns just like this one. And maybe I'm like, oh, I don't want to do something that big for my dough bowl, but I can pick pieces of it out and stitch those pieces up and still use those charts. Like if I stitch this, I'm not going to get rid of this chart because I want to do this up here. And then I'll look and see if I want to do it as a whole someday. I might hold on to it a little longer or I might save it because I might want to do a barnyard theme next year and I would stitch him up. I don't know. All right, birds of a feather. This is no bees, no honey. Now this is actually kind of big for my dough bowl. It's 112 by 128. But what I thought about doing is taking this off and just doing this middle section as a cute little sampler. I don't know. Um, this is a different one. I got this on Stash Unload and it is America Matters and it's America Matters, Liberty Matters, Peace Matters. And I thought that was cute and I bought that on Stash Unload. And it came with the buttons too. So that was kind of a nice bonus. I thought they would be cute just stitched up. Okay, now I am not even going to try to pronounce this name because I cannot. Crochet, I think it's Crochetta Gogo -Go or something like that, but I'm not... <laughs> probably like the worst pronunciation ever. All right, this is Freedom. And while I like all of it, I really like the star and the heart. Um, I would have to look and see how big, oh, okay, so the Freedom one, this, no, let me look. Yes, this one, the middle one, the biggest one is 104 by 108. And then the, these are like under 50 by 50. One is 37 by 53. I would assume maybe this one. Um, so I like that one as well. Something different for patriotic. 
Then I have Holiday Hoopla, 4th of July by Brenda Gervais. I have Pineberry Lane. I don't know that this is 4th of July, but I think it's so cute. Uh, Bushel in a Peck. And I just love that one. That one is... I don't know. I can't see a stitch count on that one. Hmm. Yeah, I can't see a stitch count. Wait a minute. Is it on front? Oh, 65 by 80. That's not big at all. Okay, I have my Loose Feathers Blackbird design in here. Um, probably won't get to it this year. This is July Snapchat snapshot from Pine Mountain. And I think this is last year's because I, I'm doing the snapshot this year and I'm getting the floss with it from Fat Quarter Shop. It's kind of like a club. So I think that's last year's. Okay, here's another one of Blackbird Design, which is Liberty and Eagle. And I think... There's two patterns in here. So you can do it like as a pin cushion. It's a little bit different or you can do like the bigger version. I would probably do the pin cushion because it's smaller. Um, I think the big one is quite big. Uh, it's 123 by 102. You could maybe leave off the border and help with some stitch count. Um, but the smaller pin cushion one back here is 66 by 76, so I would probably do that one first. Okay, I have 1776. I have no idea where I got this from. It's off somebody's blog spot. It's a free pattern from somebody, but I don't have their name. And I hate that I don't have their name because they have a beautiful photo. I've had this in my stash, so I'm not sure where I got it from. But it is it is a free pattern because it has their blog spot down here. It just doesn't have the whole name of the blog spot. So I can't give them credit, I'm sorry. All right, the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Liberty Light. Of course it's 4th of July, so that is adorable. Come on, that little Lady Liberty there, too cute. This is Birds of a Feather, Pray for Peace. I'm a huge Birds of a Feather fan. I love their pieces. I need to stitch more of them because I have them. This is Liberty Chalk Talk from Hands on Design. And I actually just want to do the small. Oh, this one is um, not supposed to be in here as well, but I saw Oh, who was it? It's a floss tuber. I cannot remember their name now. Anyhow, this is Franzi eight, 1870. Now, this is a big sampler, but she stitched this Cavalier up here, just the Cavalier. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. I loved that idea and stitching it up. So I bought the pattern. I wish I could remember who told me that, showed me that because it was fantastic and they're brilliant. All right, this is not from Garten Farm, Samuel and Elizabeth. And they are some quirky little characters that I think are adorable, adorable. This is the Prairie Schooler where the bees are. And I would like to stitch that as well. There's lots of good pieces like the bees, um, I like the bear and the honey. I like this bee. I like the bee skip. And I like that bee too. So I probably wouldn't do it as a whole sampler, although I really like it as a whole sampler too. Even if I did this on 22 count, I think it might be too big. It's 135 by 101 high. And I don't see a way to, to shrink it down to be able to make it a little bit smaller to fit in the dough bowl. I might could leave the border off. That's not gonna save that much though. 
Okay, this is another one. This is actually out of a book and Sarah K. Stitches on Instagram sent me this and I think it's so cute, but I wanna change it slightly. So it's a little pattern, I've showed this before. It's out of a magazine and she sent it to me because she knew I like bees. And it's a little saying and it says, there was a bee sat on a wall. He said he could hum and that was all. And I just think that's so cute. But what I would like to do is rechart this. This is backstitched in here. I would like to rechart it into actually words like um, st stitched block letters and then just put one or two bees around it. Not the whole bee border. So that's my intention. I would like to get, because I just think that's just so sweet. Just imagine this little bee sitting on the wall. That's it. Um, Farmyard Parade by Brenda Gervais. More patriotic. Really cute. And this is Honey, Spirit of the Woods. And this is not that big. It, well, it's 130 wide by 98 high. And I don't think I can, I'd have to do it on smaller count fabric to fit in my dough bowl, but Home is where your honey is. And I think that's so cute. So I would like to do that as well. Once again, that's a really different bee pattern. So I kind of like that. I have hats off to Uncle Sam from Blackbird Designs. And this is a super little small, but it's really cute. And I'm gonna have to clean all that up that I'm just throwing on the floor. All right, this is my bag of patriotic stuff. And I have some fabric in here. There are some free patterns in here that I've collected over the years. I don't know if you can still get them. This is from Jandlin Designs and it is Uncle Sam. So that's a free one, check Jandlin Designs. And then this is a free one from, let me see, make sure I can see it, Liberty from Lizzie Kate. And then this one is from Plum Street Samplers. It is, uh, what's the name of this? Happy Birthday, Mr. President. You look cute. So those are some free ones that I have stuck in this bag. I would just use whatever floss I have in this bag, and I have a lot. Um, here is Liberty, and it's just all 4th of July words. I have it stuck in this bag as well. This is Let Freedom Ring by Lizzie Kate. Land That I Love from Lizzie Kate. Fourth of July from Lizzie Kate. This is America, just America from Heart and Hand. Um, that one I already showed. Um, Heart and Hand, We Won Libby. Libby. She's cute. This is Lizzie K USA Squared. Cute little one. And this is Heart and Hand Free. Love those. And these are some little Heart and Hand Merry Making Minis, 4th of July. These do not, these are really simply quick. So I had three of those. And then, um, God Bless America from Lizzie Kate. And Grand Old Flag from Heart and Hand. And so these were just some that I had in there. Like I said, I stuck them all in this bag and I would use, it, it wouldn't matter what pattern it was, whatever colors I have in here is what I would dig from. Okay, now these I actually think I'm taking out because they are, Rose from Bent Creek. And I think I have determined that these are too long to do as pillows. If anybody has ever done these rows, this is um, spring row 
and Patriotic Row from Bent Creek. And if, if you finished them into pillows, leave me a comment. How long was your finished pillow and what fabric did you use? What fabric count? I, I think they're going to be too long for, I think it needs to be a flat fold finish. Um, these are stuck in there. They're not patriotic, but they're kind of going on my dog theme because we have dogs. Um, I'm not going to even try that last name. Charlotte 1815 from Scarlet House, which I I just love those little dogs. And then, and this is not big. This is 70 by 86. I, I love the idea of like a tiny sampler on a, on a pillow. I just, I, it's so cute. And this is called Faithful Friend uh, from Scattered Seed Samplers. And once again, this is not big. It is 90 by 48. I don't know that I'll get to them this year, but there they are. I have the Beekeeper from the Frosted Pumpkin. This is Buzz from uh, Hands On Design. I don't know that I would finish it into a cube. I don't know, might be fun. I've never done a cube. This is a free pattern and I'm going to show the pattern from the Snowflower, Snowflower Sunflower Diary, sorry. There it is with the little bear and the bees. I think that's really cute too. Now, this is from Stitchin' Mama, and it is the Chevron alphabet. And I think it would be really cute to do the word buzz in Chevron and just pick my colors. So, Stitchin' Mama has a camo alphabet. She has the plaid alphabet. She has a Chevron alphabet. I did the plaid for my kids, their name on the Christmas tree last year. You can check out those videos um, for ornaments, I did each of their names. My kids have smaller names, so I keep that in mind. Um, but it was, it's, it, they turn out really, really cute. So I thought I could do the word buzz in Chevron. This is from Roveris. Uh, what is it called? I don't know what it's called. It's the B one really cute. Nose itch. This is Skip, Skep of Bees from Bent Creek. And once again, it is a kitted chart. Now this one does not have the fabric in it. I don't know whether I took it out for something else or it never actually came with it. That I don't know. But once again, this isn't a big one. It is a 55 by 55. So that's really cute too. We have Plum Street Samplers Babushka's Bees. Now, this one is getting on the big side because it's 145 by 82 tall. So either I would have to do this on very tiny fabric or I don't think I could leave off anything. I might could do just like half of the pattern to make it a little more manageable for a dough bowl. This is from the Primitive Hair Mother of Bees. That may be one of the best bees I've ever seen. That's fantastic. And from Stitching with the Housewife, Buzz of Bees. This is from Primitive Hair, Be Happy. Once again, I don't intend to do all of these, but this is what I'm choosing from when I go to pull out my next small. This is from the Cali Calico Confectur Confectory, sorry, Mind Your Beeswax. Really cute. Once again, this is Bent Street Glory. I think it's too long. Let me know though, if somebody has done this as a pillow, leave me a comment. This is an oldie but goodie, a salute to America from Leisure Arts. And I actually really like, I like both of these and they're not that big. So there's the whole pattern, but I really like those two. And they're not big, I looked at them. Okay, this is Jack's Sweet Shop, Betsy's Tart, and it is Let Freedom Ring from Plum Street Samplery. 
This is Barbara Anna Designs Long Made She Wave. Now, I don't think, I think I looked at the stitch count. This is 133 by 149. That is a little too big for a flop, for a pillow. But I might could leave the top off and just do this section or just do the bird and um, like Uncle Sam. So I like Uncle Sam on the bird. Maybe I'll just do him. That'd be cute. This is Heartstring Samplery. This is on my short list. Um, Long May She Wave. And I adore this little pin cushion version. Adore that. Okay, Basket Full of Summertime from Brenda Gervais. Really cute. This is Sam and Liberty from Stitching with the Housewives. So, and I have bought that as a PDF. So, once again, Bent Creek, Stars and Stripes Forever. I don't think I can do it as a pillow. I had it in here. I'm probably going to pull those out. Okay, this is Roveris and is the ABCs of these, but I don't think that's the exact name. They don't put their name on the front cover, so I'm not sure, but it has all the alphabet with different B stuff in it. And I think it's so cute. Really, really sweet. I have some gray B fabric that I would really like to finish those on, so I need to find a gray fabric to do it on. I think that would be really cute. Okay, this is Star Spangled Swine Farm, and I really like the mini, and then I like this one too. I love the big one, but I don't know that I would break it apart. I think I would do it as a whole. Probably not this year. All right, I'm getting to the end of my basket. This is farm sampler from Lizzie Kate and I just threw it in here because it's a little mini and it's not that big and it's really really cute. Some of these don't apply to my theme so they probably won't get done. This is from the Prairie Schooler August and I really like all of it. I mean there's nothing on here that I don't like. Like I love the little small sampler and then I love the big sampler. Once again, I don't know that I will do it this year, but I do have it kitted up, so I threw it in, in this one. Uh, okay. This one is all kitted up, ready to go. Uh, Manny Die Donna, and that's probably not how you say it, Land of Freedom Sewing Box. So there's also, there's this one, and there's also some little minis in here that I like. So I threw it in here. So I also have a piece of fabric in here that is 28, 25 count Lugana Desert Iris. It's opalescent raw, but it's 25 count. If anybody knows who has this in stock, leave me a comment. I need another piece of this for something else and I cannot find it. So either I am going to pull this piece to use it for the other thing, which I think I determined wasn't big enough for the other thing. So I need a couple more pieces of it because I would be doing it individually, but I can't find it in stock anywhere. All right, that's it. That's all in my basket. So I do have some other charts in a chalkboard bag that has various chalkboard pieces, my seed packs in it. Um, different things over there. I do have another B pattern that I've started. So you, and I'm all the time looking for new patterns or I'm scouring my stash and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, this would work. So like I said, not all, I do not intend to do all those this year, but when I'm going to pick, that's where I'm picking from. At the end, when I'm done stitching bees and Patriotic, I will take all these charts and put them back in my filing cabinet. They will be filed again for next year and I can pull them out or not pull them out. Um, but they will go back in the cabinet after the season and then I will move on to fall. Um, I think because the progress I'm getting done, I may start fall in May. 
I unstitched fall and Halloween in, in May and June, and then July would be Christmas in July. Um, and that might be enough of fall that I could just continue on stitching Christmas the rest of the year. I don't know. Well, I'll have to see because I do have like five Thanksgiving stand-ups to finish that I have not finished yet. Um, I do have a couple of fall pieces to finish for my dough bowl that were done last year that I just didn't fully finish. So given two months, that might be enough fall stitching, Halloween stitching, Thanksgiving stitching, because I kind of lumped that into fall and to be done and then do Christmas stitching after July, which would give me six months of Christmas stitching. That would be amazing. But I would also like to start working in some of my bigger projects. So I don't know. I'm just going to have to see how much progress I make. Some of these charts obviously will take longer than others and that'll slow me down. So, and that's okay. Um, I have five already finished for my dough bowl for the summer. So I'm so stoked about that. And I had three more to fully finish. So I have eight pieces already stitched for my dough bowl for the summer. So if I stopped there, that would be a great start. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue stitching because I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, and just go from there. Um, okay. I have run over. Hopefully you enjoyed all that. Um, randomly how I kind of pull patterns together and then I can pull from them. And then also taking bigger patterns and piecing them out to make little smalls. So you don't have to run out and buy you know, 20 smalls to do on your dough bowl, look at some of your bigger projects and see what you have. And you might find some great projects to do for your dough bowl off of your bigger patterns. I mean, this is, this is going to be a fantastic pattern for me. I mean, I've had two finishes with it already. Great. And I can still always go back and stitch it as a full piece. Fantastic, right? So look at those big patterns. All right. I hope I answered everybody's questions. If I did not answer your question, I will try to get it next time. And then I will also get my list of shout out floss tubers because there is a new floss tuber and she's delightful. And I wanted to shout her out and I didn't bring my list in here. So I will do that. Um, thank you for joining me today. If you made it this far, you're a trooper. Um, thank you for joining me and I'll see you guys in probably two weeks.